What's up guys, Kudokun here. Today we're finally going to get around to doing a video that people have been requesting of me for probably a good two or so years now, and we're going to talk about how to actually use TradeCardsOnline.com. For people who don't know what TradeCardsOnline is, it's a place where you can go to catalog your card collections, trade with other people, and also play some of your favorite card games online. We'll cover dueling first, because I feel like it's what people want to see the most and what people use the site the most for. Before we do any of that, though, we need to actually sign up for the site. So just go right over here to sign up. This is a pretty average sheet that you should fill out. You've probably filled out a million of these, uh, especially for Facebook. <laughs> um, if you could, though, right here, there's a little section called Recommended By. Um, if you put somebody's name here, then it helps them out a little bit, it gives them some bonus points. So if you could just type in Yuma Gure, this is my name on the site. If you feel like being extra awesome, it would really help me out if maybe you put this in the recommended by section, but other than that, everything else should be pretty self-explanatory. Now that you have an account, I'm gonna teach you how to build your own deck so that you can play online. You're gonna wanna head up here to the red button called playing and head down to decks once you've hit here, you can choose which game you want to play. Uh, right here, there's a little drop-down window where you can choose your game here if you want, but you can also just choose your game based on the pictures, and it's also alphabetized here. So just choose the game that interests you. The active game section are for games that either have a really big fan base or are still going even to this day. And then there's an old game section for games that have maybe stopped producing new cards or maybe don't have a fan base. Once you've chosen your game, just click the name, and you'll see a button right here under the logo of the game you've chosen. This is how you build your deck. First, click this button, and you'll see a sheet that looks like this. So, in order to start editing your deck, you first need to give it a name and a description. For name, just give it whatever name you feel like. Let's pretend, for example, we're building, like, uh, Haruhi Rocks forever so <laughs> this is this is an example of a name once you've given the deck a name you can just give it some kind of description the description should normally have something about the deck because other people will be seeing the deck and you also want a point of reference for what you built the deck to do so here uh, i could just say something like um uh haru he is the cutest XOXOXOXO. Okay. So once you've given it some kind of name and some kind of description, go right up here to update and click. Once you've done this, uh, you should notice that this box shows up and you can start actually editing the deck. There are two different ways to start adding cards to your deck. You can either hit the add cards button, which will bring you to a giant list that you can start adding cards from, or, if you're playing a game that has cards that are very easy to locate, you can just go right here to Quick Add. So in Quick Add, let's say, for example, I wanted to add the level 3 Trouble Girl Haruhi. I could just hit Trouble... Nope. Girl. And it'll bring up a list of every card that has Trouble Girl in its name. So from here, I can choose which one I want. I could click this. Over here, I choose how many I want there to be. So let's say I want to add four copies. I hit the Add button. And now the card shows up in my deck. You do this for each card that you want in the deck, or you could also just go here to Add Cards. In Add Cards, you can sometimes add cards even faster than you could using the Quick Search. Once you click it, you'll be able to see this little card search window here. Here you can put in anything that you know about the cards that you want, including its rarity, its type, its color, so on and so forth. This will be different depending on the card game that you play, and it's pretty detailed. Most of the time you'll be going right here to card name. So since we're building a Haruhi deck, I'll just put in the word Haruhi and search for cards. Once you've chosen your search parameters, you'll see something that looks like this. This list is fine if you know exactly what you're looking for, but you can also go up here to extended format, which is my personal preference. This will bring up the image of each card in case you need to look at them by image, and it also brings up all of the card's effect text. 
Once you found your way here, you can use Control F to find specific cards that you need. For example, let me put in Usual. Once we find the card that we need here, all we have to do is put how many we want in the deck over here on the side, three in this case, and the rest pretty much does itself. So if we go down here and we see any other cards we might want in the deck, for example, maybe we want a couple of Haruhi Hates Boredoms, I'll put three of those in too. We can go down the list like this and continue to add cards as long as we need. Once you've added all of the cards that you need, right here on the bottom, there will be a button that will let you add the cards and finish or add the cards and repeat. If you hit add cards and finish, it will take you back to the previous screen where you can continue adding cards through quick search or if you're done with the deck, publish the deck. If you hit add cards and repeat, then it will add the current cards you have and then do a research of new cards. So let's say for example that now that I've added Haruhi, I wanna add something else to it. Let's say I wanna add aliens. What I can do here is text on the card, I can put in the trait of the card or something that I know is for sure going to be on the card, like alien. I can switch color up here to blue. And if I wanted to, I could even go up here and put in the set. So let's see here. Haruhi trial deck, why not? <laughs> Search for cards. Now it's done another search, taking all of these parameters into account. And we have here all of the aliens that I can add to the deck. And if I see any here that I like, of course, all I have to do is put the number I want in and hit add cards and finish. In some games like the Naruto TCG, you actually can't really use the quick add effectively because if we were to search for a card such as Naruto, we can't actually bring up the exact Naruto we need because so many have been made. And since Naruto doesn't have subtitles, we can't put in a convenient subtitle like we can for Weiss Swartz. Once you've actually found the card you need though, you'll notice that there's another area called section that appears in most other card games. This lets you organize the card based on what type of card they are, which is really helpful because some of the cards end up in a separate deck, just like in Yu-Gi-Oh! or sometimes Magic the Gathering, that aren't actually in your main deck. So for example, if we wanted to add cards to the reinforcement deck, all we have to do is pick a reinforcement deck and then pick something from here, just like you would in any other regular card search. So if I search something like Naruto, and then if I wanted to up here, I could even choose to have it be a ninja and then put reinforcement right here on text of card. And this will bring up every card that is a ninja, has Naruto in the name, and is reinforcement essentially. So we go to extended format, and we should be able to find the card we need pretty easily from here. And again, you can just add it like this, add cards and finish. Now it will show up in the reinforcement deck. For these other sections, you don't necessarily have to add them to their correct area for them to be in your main deck. The game will just assume that everything goes into your main deck that is outside of your reinforcement deck, but it can make actually sorting the cards a little bit easier. For example, if I wanted to add the Naruto 2K Barrage, I could put it under Jutsu cards, and then whenever I'm organizing the deck to take a look at it later, it's in the correct section, and it just looks a lot nicer. So jumping ahead a little bit, this is a deck that I've just put into the site called the April Fools, which will be featured in a deck list a little bit later. But for right now, we're just gonna use it as an example. It's a complete deck, it has 50 cards in it, and now there are a couple of other options here that we might wanna look at. Subscribe to the discussion of this deck. So for this, we can actually get notifications to our email address if anybody decides to leave any comments on this deck or leave us any feedback. We can also opt out of it by just not checking the box. Another thing we can do is make this deck private. So this means that nobody else on the site will be able to click this deck and view what's in it. This can be helpful if you are trying to play against people competitively and you don't want them to look into your deck list and see what you have and you consider that a form of cheating. Uh, you can only use this if you are a premium subscriber, which you will be the first time that you sign up for the site, and I think for about two weeks afterwards. 
This does have a few drawbacks, but we'll get to that later. Essentially, you want to use this if you're playing competitively and you don't want people to be able to look at your deck and see how many of each card you have in it. At any point, you can hit the update button to make sure all of your changes take effect, and when you're completely done, you can hit the publish button. Once you've hit the publish button, you'll be able to see your deck just like this. If you want to see the extended, the extended button is right here, just as always. And of course, now you're done. If you head back here to decks, and you go back to the area with the Y Sports decks, you'll see your deck show up right here at the top of the list. Of course, you could always look back on the deck by clicking it here. And if you ever look at your deck, you can get a whole bunch of stuff right here. You can edit the deck if you ever need to. You can see the statistics of your deck and see how well it's doing. And you can also check the uh, distribution of specific cards in the deck, like how many level zeros you have, so on and so forth. Uh, you can check the discussion on your deck if anybody's talking about it. And you can also rate the deck, which obviously you don't want to do for your own deck, but you want to do for others. So right down here, if you ever need like a little cheat sheet, it's nice to come down here and organize the deck by some kind of list. Like, for example, we'll go level, and now we've got all of our uh, zeros here, ones, twos, threes, so on and so forth. Keep in mind that you don't have to build a deck in order to play. If you see a deck from a list that you like, or if you're playing a game that you're unfamiliar with, you are free to try out somebody else's deck. You can check out their deck just like you could check out your own. For example, we'll check out this Rin Hoshizora. And if it's something that we like, then we can choose to use this deck instead of our own. Another thing is uh, these locked symbols right here, which of course is the private deck function I was talking about before. If we try to open up one of these decks to take a look at it, then you'll see it won't actually let us see it. It just brings us back to this page here. So, from here, we get to the fun stuff. Let's go ahead and play our deck online. When you enter the room, you'll notice a list of other players who are also in the room. You can challenge one of them to a match by hitting the button right here. Unfortunately, I have to reject this guy here because I'm doing a video, but... <laughs> you can hit the challenge button to challenge another person to a match. You can also go down here to the chat room and chat with your fellow players. It's nice to have people to play with before you actually get to the site, because some rooms can be pretty dead depending on the game you want to play. But let's go ahead and challenge ourselves here so that we can test out the game. The other person will get a button that says either accept or reject, and then you'll be taken to this face here. So all you have to do is first of all click this, it's just a basic tutorial on how the game works. Right here you'll notice that this is your deck of cards. If you right click it a bunch of options will pop up. You can view your deck here which will let you look through your deck for a card that you need. You can hit shuffle which will just shuffle your deck up. You can do it as many times as you want to but each time you do it it will show up here in the chat so try not to be too obnoxious with it. You can move the top card of your deck to the bottom. You can move the bottom card to the top or you can show the deck to your opponent so that they can look through your deck for whatever effect they might happen to have. You'll notice that you can't actually use these options with your opponent's deck. You also can't do anything with your opponent's hand. Now before a match usually begins, you normally want to decide who goes first. This is normally done on the site by using this coins and dice function right here. Some people will choose a 12-sided dice, but personally, I normally use a 6-sided dice. When you hit the roll button here, it'll show you right here what your result is. It'll choose a random number based on the number of the dice you provided, and your opponent will normally do the same. You can also change the amount of dice here if you're using some kind of card effect. If you decide that you don't want to use a dice, you can also use a coin right here. This is also useful for effects. All you have to do is hit the flip button, and it works exactly the same as the dice. These counters here are game specific. Some games will have some kind of life point system such as Yu-Gi-Oh! where you can set this to 8000 for example to show how many life points you have. Maybe you want to use it for Naruto and show what turn you're on. There are some games that don't really need it at all so for a game like Y Sports we normally just keep it at zero. 
You can also use tokens to represent specific things in the game. These are also game specific and everybody has a different idea of what they're supposed to mean, so really just choose the ones that suit you and make it very clear to your opponent which ones they are. The way I usually like to use them is blue are for buffs and positive effects, red are for debuffs and negative effects, and green are for very game specific effects that you don't see in many other card games. You can also hit the Rock, Paper, Scissors game right here, and it'll have you and your opponent rock, both paper, play a scissors, game of Rock, go. Paper, Scissors, and then give you the result right here. Now that we know how to use the sidebar, let's learn how to use the actual cards. So to draw a card from your deck, just drag the card from the top of your deck into the area labeled your hand. It'll automatically flip to show for you, but your opponent will still not be able to see it. All cards in your hands are completely yours to view and your opponent will never get to see them until you reveal them. So let's go ahead and draw five cards. Now whenever you move a card from your hands to any other area on the board it will automatically be placed face down so that your opponent can't see it just in case there's an effect that makes it so your opponent isn't allowed to see your card. If a card comes into play like this face down no matter where it is you can double tap to flip a card over. The basic rule is double tapping flips a card face down or face up and right clicking a card will tap the card or turn it sideways. This is the case for pretty much every single card in the card game. Whoa hey guys uh, something small I forgot to say. If you single click a card it'll bring up a deck list. This works for yours and your opponent's decks. This is another reason that the lock function could be useful because if your opponent clicks your deck and your deck isn't locked, they can bring up your deck list during a game. But if all the cards in your deck aren't translated, then sometimes they'll need to single click so they can actually look up the card. That's all I wanted to add here. If you single click a card, it'll bring up a deck list. You can also right click your hand for some options too. You can choose a card from your hand randomly for a random choose effect. You can show your opponent the hand in case they have a card effect that lets them look at your hand and choose something. And you can also shuffle your hand just in case your opponent saw what card you drew and where you placed it in your hands. On its face, this is a very simple system and it works with pretty much every single card game you can imagine, but you do have to get used to doing some things manually and for some card games it can be kind of rough. For example, if anybody's played Weiss Swartz, you'll know that at the end of your deck, you have to take your discard pile and shuffle it back into your deck. So, finding a manual way around that will be part of what helps you get used to the system a lot easier. One other thing that you have to keep in mind about the system is, to make things a little more convenient, if you have cards stacked on top of each other, and you move one of the cards on the bottom of the stack, then all of the cards above that card will also move, including tokens. So, let's say, for example, we're playing Weiss Swartz, and I have some cards right here in my clock. Now let's say I have these five cards here in my clock and for whatever reason I need to move them. Like maybe I've gotten to seven cards now and I need to level up. So let's say for instance I want to level up with this protagonist leader card here. If I try to move the protagonist leader by itself, it'll move everything that was also on top of protagonist leader. So to make things easier, I can just move the card on top of that card, and now this card no longer has anything on top of it. Now I can move this card with no problem, right click it of course to turn it sideways, and bam, now it's in my level area. You'll notice in some card games, when you move cards to your opponent's side of the board, you will no longer be able to control them. That's because cards under your opponent's control cannot be activated by you. So if this happens, just very politely ask your opponent to move the card back to your side of the field so you can continue using it. You may notice a few bugs occur sometimes, like sometimes cards will appear under cards even though they're on top of the stack, sometimes card images won't show up, you name it, it runs the gambit. Keep in mind that this is a free program so it's not going to be perfect, but it is my preferred way to play these cards online. Once you finish the duel, right up here, you can hit end game to end the game in one of three ways. You can either admit that your opponent is the winner of the match, you can request a tie, or if your opponent's left the game, or if your opponent refuses to play properly, you can hit cannot end game properly. 
Now, do keep in mind that you do have to have been in the match for about 5 or so minutes before you can actually end the game. Now that you know the basics of playing, let me teach you how to get back to your own deck. So, if you've built a couple of decks, or if it's been a while since you've built your last deck, you'll want to go here to list your own decks, and this will bring up a list of all of the decks that you personally have made. This will pretty much just change the author area to your name and do an automatic search. So if you wanted to search for somebody specific who's made decks, for example, you can search for Yuma Gure to find my decks, then you can do that too. You can also search for size, the description of the deck, or containing a specific card if there's a certain deck you want to try out. Moving away from decks, we'll go to online games next. This will be an exact list of all of the games that are currently available on the site. Some sections allow you to play games, and some sections allow you to just build decks to keep for future reference. So, if we head down here, we'll notice that there are some rankings for people who are interested in playing online and seeing how well they do. And it's really just an easier way to get to a specific deck that you're looking for. For example, we can use this to go straight to Chaotic, or Wii Cross, or Pokemon. Next up, we'll go to tournaments. So for the tournament section, you don't have to specifically enter a game in order to be in a tournament. You just have to play a specific card game during a time that a tournament is going on. Essentially, any time you play a card game is a good time to get points to be in this tournament. One other neat feature of the site is if you go back here to games, you can actually find a game that you're interested in and look at replays. So for example, Let's go back down to our good old pal Weiss Swartz. If we wanted to check out a replay of a match, or if we just wanted to see what some other people are playing with, then all we have to do is go over here and hit the replay button. This will bring the game back up and allow you to watch the game as it progresses. Everything from the beginning to the end, you'll be able to see both players' hands, and you'll be able to see the chat. You can also pause this at any time by clicking this button here, or you can send the replay to other people to watch on any of the social media sites you see here. You can also apply for a judge status to allow you to check the disputes of any games that players have made. That way you can settle disputes about card effects or specific interactions in the game that normal people just don't understand. That's pretty much it for being a player. If you have any specific questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below, but I'm going to move on to collecting. So, right here under data, you'll want to fill these sections out. First of all, the cards you have. This will be pretty similar to other settings that you have. Whatever card game you play the most will be your automatic card game when choosing to add cards that you want or you have. You can change the game that you want to add here. So once you've gone here, this list should look pretty familiar to you. It's the exact same list as the playing. All we have to do is pick the game that we want. We'll go and stick to Y Swartz for right now. And then right here, it'll show all of the cards that are currently in your collection. Of course, you can quick add stuff just like you could before. I'll put in Trouble Girl Haruhi just so you guys can see. So let's say I actually have some of these in my collection. I can choose to put as many of these as I want. Let's say I've got 10 of them. Oh, 210 apparently. <laughs> I've got 210 Haruhi Trouble Girls in my collection. Now I don't actually have 210 Trouble Girl Haruhis in my collection, so we'll probably want to go ahead and take this out. So again, you can use this to search for cards based on their set, based on their name, based on the text. Whatever you have in your collection, just put on a good podcast, maybe put on some Kudo-kun videos, and just get your collection put in and sorted here. This is a pretty convenient way to keep your collection sorted, and you can also put how many of each card you have up for trade here as well, so that if you want to start trading with other people, you can. Speaking of trading with other people, You'll want to go here to cards you want and fill this out too. So if there's a specific card you're looking for to complete your collection, or if there are just any cards that you need for whatever reason, you can add them here just like the cards you have area, so that you can start trading with other people based on their wants and haves. Once you're done adding the cards that you want and the cards that you have, then you can check out the other stuff like checking your messages, messing with your profile, and messing with whether or not you have premium subscription. Search for a card will let you look through specific sets. So if we wanted to go back to Weiss Swartz, for example, we can see what some of the most wanted cards are over here. We can check out some of the later booster packs and trial decks and such. 
or we can just search for stuff that we want. Let's say, for example, maybe we want to look at stuff from the Lucky Star set. So I put in Lucky. We go to Lucky Star Booster Pack, search for cards. While we're here, we're going to hit Extended Format so we can see it a little easier. And then we can look through the cards like this. If we happen to see a card that we want to like, we can go ahead and hit here, who has this card and who wants this card. So let's say, for example, that we had Chocolate Cornet and we wanted to see who was looking for this card because I knew it was a valuable card and I wanted to trade it off. I could go ahead and hit the who wants this card, or if I was looking for this card to add to my collection, I could hit who has this card. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like anybody has this card in their collection. Unfortunately, some cards you run into won't have English effect text, or there won't be any effect text at all. This happens sometimes. Just open the card, hit the edit button, and you'll be able to add the text yourself. Now, if you don't know where to go to get the effect text, I'll show you a cool site. This is heartofthecards.com. This is pretty much the go-to place to find Weiss Swartz information. So the card we're looking for is in the Katana Gatati Extra Pack. Let's go ahead and look here. JJK Katana Gatati. The name of the card is Family That Becomes. So let's just control F. Family That Becomes Sheath. The effect text is right here. All we have to do is copy this. We don't want to mess with this Japanese effect text just in case somebody was using it. So let's go ahead and just put it right here. Paste. Great. Now we just go here to the bottom to update the card. Now somebody from the staff will go through and verify that this is the correct effect text to make sure that we didn't put something weird here like uh, butt farts or something. <laughs> and uh, then it'll be updated in about half an hour to an hour. This might sound a little annoying, but it doesn't happen as often as it used to, and once you do it once, it'll be that way forever, so you never have to worry about doing it again, and neither does anybody else. Now, if you're actually looking for trades, unfortunately, you won't be able to do this unless you're a premium member, but the premium subscription isn't very expensive, and it makes sure that less people will be on here to scam you. So if trading is something you're interested in, I highly recommend becoming a premium member so that you can join the trading fund and not get scammed. When you become a premium member and you see this page, you'll want to switch these to one. This is the easiest way to find the most amount of trades possible. You can include miniatures. You can get matches only in specific card games if you've only dedicated yourself to a single card game. You can search in all countries or you can leave this closed just to search in your country. So for example here, if I switch this to the United States, then I'll only find trades in the United States and it won't be overseas. You can also match the cards in your private collection. You can only look for new matches, as in it'll exclude anybody that you've already tried to match with. And if there's anybody who's tried to scam you or was just not a very nice person, you can go ahead and put their name here so that they won't show up. Not me, though. I'm awesome. This is the part where you would look for trades. Unfortunately, I'm not a premium member right now, so I won't be able to show you exactly how trading works, but I'll give you the gist. Essentially, when two people trade, the person who has the least amount of successful trades will trade their cards first. Once the second person has received their package and confirmed that all of the cards they've gotten are correct, then they'll trade their half of the deal. This sounds like kind of a raw deal, especially if you haven't traded before, but the cool thing about this is once you've traded once, you'll have seniority over anybody who hasn't traded before. And every time you successfully trade, you'll get more and more seniority, and there'll be more and more people who have to give you their cards first, and then you can send them your cards second. This is the best way to keep scammers from getting a hold of cards and just not giving anything back. Despite this system, sometimes you'll still find people who don't quite trade properly, so just go here to Bad Trade Reports and report them to keep other people from getting scammed. On the other hand, if you find anybody awesome, then go ahead and put them here under References. Sandwiched right here in the middle is a place where you can check your own trades. Unfortunately, I haven't traded on this account, so uh, there's not a whole lot here to look at. That about covers it for trading. The rest of it should be pretty self-explanatory. Again, if you have any specific questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I will be happy to answer. One question I know a lot of people might have is, can I trade my cards for money? 
as far as I know, it's not against the rules. You can double check me on that. It has been a while since I've read the rules, but you can trade for money, although it's not very common here. Most of the people here are here to document their own collections and trade with other people's collections. Now let's check out some of the fun stuff like the community. Here you can check out some of the other players. You can look up card reviews to see what cards are circulating right now. You can go to dream cards, which will show you any fan-made cards for your favorite games. So let's look at Kirito, Stats of a God. Act, counter, backup, 7,000, level 3, 2. Put this card from your hand to the waiting room, choose one of your characters that is being frontal attacked, and it gets plus 7,000 power. Whoa, what a meme. So if you've ever wanted to make your own Steven Universe cards, well, I guess you can do so here. You can also hit up the forums to chat with anybody else about specific card games. You can find chat rooms, but unfortunately, only premium members have access to the chat rooms. You can look up specific game announcements or just see what's trending on the site. You can become affiliated with the site to get special goodies. You can become an affiliate of the site to help them out and get some special rewards. You can also invite some of your friends to the site to help grow our fan base. The last thing we'll look at here are resources. There's of course an FAQ just in case you have any special questions. You'll want to check out this Can I Try Premium Membership free thing here. Uh, I think it has some very useful tips on how to get premium membership for free instead of having to pay for it. The links page is great if you're into a specific card game. Like let's say for example we wanted to check out Lord of the Rings. We can go to any of these three sites here to find out even more information about the game. And finally, we can go here to give our opinion if you want to give them some feedback about their site. Keep in mind, though, if you do have any questions, you can normally find the answer here in the FAQ, so make sure to check there first. And that's about it for TradeCardsOnline.com. Overall, a pretty useful site, probably one of my most visited sites of all time. If you have any specific questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you've never checked out the site before, again, that uh, referral area, if you could just put Yumagure, it would be just super, super awesome of you. And if you're looking for people to play with, I will leave a link to my Discord in the description box below. So if you have a card game you like to play, but you're having trouble finding players, somebody in my fan base probably plays it, and they'd probably love to play it with you. Thank you all for stopping by, and I hope to see you in-game.